last leg of earnings season and three quarters of the Nifty already reporting numbers. Eight of those 35 companies have beat street estimates in the quarter gone by. And the reason is cost control, as Neeraj is about to tell you. Neeraj. Yeah, so it's interesting. And, you know, data reveals, I mean, it hides a lot. Uh, the, the saying, right? It hides as much as it reveals. But here's, here's, here's some number crunching done for you. And with focus on cost control. So firstly, 78.8% or thereabouts of the Nifty numbers have come out. The Nifty weightage has come out. Now, the data is that about 41% of the Nifty weightage ex BFSI, essentially. I've, I've separated BFSI from the rest of the manufacturing and the other companies uh, for a reason. But Nifty weightage ex BFSI, 41.1% that has come out with numbers. And 28.1% of that ex BFSI, this is the total weightage, 28.1%. But ex BFSI, 28.1% have displayed better operational performance. This is strong considering that in BFSI too, if you look at banks, almost all banks which are worth their salt or really have not had a disruption like access, etc., have displayed better cost to income ratio. But we'll get to that in a bit. Here's, here's some statistics. Not a single company, Menka which has displayed weak cost control, has been able to beat estimates. This shows that almost every good number that has come out, has, if it has beaten estimates, even ever so marginally, has displayed cost control. So we haven't had a quarter wherein the revenue growth has overtaken any kind of concerns that may be, that have been on the street. Almost all companies, if in all the revenue growth has been okay, they have been able to beat the bottom line estimates only and only if the cost control measures are in place. And I'll tell you why as well. And I'll tell you about a couple of instances wherein the top line numbers were probably not so bad, but because of weak operational performance, the numbers overall didn't look that great. Now, the tech titans have been at the forefront of cost control. Look at what all of these companies have done compared to estimates. This is as per estimates. The only exception was HCL Tech, mind you, but TCS estimated 24.5% actual bit margins, 25.1%. Similarly, for Infosys, I think the estimated was 23 and a half. It came in with 24.2. Tech Mahindra 2, 13.8% was the estimated. They have come out with 14.5%. So these are the leaders of sorts. As a pack, if one sector has done really well on the cost control fund, probably they needed to. Probably currency tailwinds helped them. But this is the pack that did really well on the cost control front. Now, the other pack, which uh, I, I think stood out, was commodities. One would have thought that they would have displayed an identical picture. Not so. It was a complete mixed bag. So IOC, ONGC, Vedanta and Tata Steel, extremely weak, weak operationally. Let me not use the term extremely. I think that would reserve for IOC. Extremely weak operationally. Uh, I think employee costs came in out there. And on the other side, companies like Ultratech, Hindalco, very strong operationally. Ambuja in line on the operational parameters. But the commodity pack uh, displayed a bit of a mixed bag. And then uh, I was just trying to see uh, what's happened to banks since I mentioned cost to income ratio for almost all the private sector banks. Here are the numbers. Uh, leave aside access and don't compare ICICI Bank, quite frankly, on, on, on a YOI basis. It was difficult to compare ICICI Bank. But HDFC, Indusind, Kotak, Yes Bank as well, which had a bit of a blip this quarter. If you look at the cost to income ratio, substantially better than what they did on a quarter on quarter basis. Uh, at least HDFC Bank, 42.6%, it's come off uh, from uh, the previous quarter on a YOI basis. Similarly, for Kotak and Yes Bank as well, look at these ratios, compare them to what they did in the corresponding quarter last year, and the cost to income ratio has come off substantially for the private sector banks as well. So by and large, India Inc. has displayed a lot of cost control in this quarter. I just thought I'll bring up two or three names which stood out. So here are those names. TCS, uh, look at what cost control did. So the income was up 3.2%, but because margins moved up from 23.4 to 25.1, the bottom line performance went up by 8%. Clear bump up that came in into the bottom line as a result of sharp operational performance. Similarly, two other names that I thought stood out. One of them was Z UPL. OK, now let's start with UPL. Revenue, 6.5%. Margins, 18% versus 15 and a half. Uh, I think 200 bips above estimates. And therefore, the bottom line, 43.6%. In the case of Z, actually, the top line fell a little bit, if I'm not wrong. Yes, revenues fell 6.7%. But operationally, from 24% to 30%, 600 bips jump in margins aided by some extraordinaries, uh, yet the number was a strong profit number. Clearly shows that almost all the large companies wherein they exercised cost control, they were able to beat uh, the bottom line performance very, very handsomely. 
just the two names that I thought stood out on the weak side, the cost control was not there. And I mentioned that there were a couple of companies which didn't do well. One of them was Indian Oil Corporation, wherein the employee cost went up 26%. Revenue was down 14%, but because the employee cost went down 26%, went up 26%, the number is much, much lower than what we were working with. And Bharti Infra, wherein you could argue that optically the margins were in line, but the margins were clearly saved, not as a result of the core operations, but because of the energy business which came in and helped them save the margins, not beat margins, but save margins. But as a result of that, their numbers too, Subestimates, and then there were one or two others. But these are essentially the companies which I think stood out in terms of highlights. Um, more companies beating, very few companies missing estimates. I mean, yeah, there were some cost control surprises by companies like Reddy's, Bharti, and HUL, and therefore those numbers too managed to beat on the upside. But largely, as I would put it, this quarter was all about at least the nifty 50 displaying strong cost control. If you didn't display that, you didn't manage to beat estimates. So I guess with the IT companies, if we were to try and read a little bit more into this and what it means on a broader trend, A, cost control great, B, in the face of um, not big moves, uh, move ups in revenue, that's disappointing. IT companies, I would imagine that most of this would have come on the back of lower hiring. Uh, which doesn't bode very well for jobs, so yeah. that's one. Even for banks, yeah. Yeah, for banks as well, doesn't bode very well for jobs. So both those sectors we've seen, you know, either layoffs or, you know, in some yeah. senses, retrenchment of some sort, or just organic slowing down of hiring, not filling in new positions, etc. And uh, more interestingly, in the quarters to come, uh, let's see how higher commodity prices start feeding into higher input yeah. prices, right? Yeah. I think you already saw that in some of the companies that you were listing that didn't do very, uh, you know, that didn't do very well. So I'm guessing the two oil companies, uh, you know, uh, were also facing in some ways the inability to manage that end. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to see that happen all through. Yeah, even metal companies, Minka, metal you're right. Companies, yeah. Tata Steel and, and uh, one more, I think they couldn't quite manage the input cost, cost pressures as well as the output cost went up. So Hindalgo was the exception, yeah. quite frankly. But Vedanta and Tata Steel, again, a poor quarter because of the input cost pressure.